when you see steam come off of the ground and so forth. Uh, that's what our sweet aroma was like. It kept, it's still going in this room. It's still ascending to him. Oh, yes. <laughs> Hallelujah. Would you turn to Colossians 3, please? The joy of the Lord is our strength, right? And his, and, and his presence is fullness of joy. Man, when you get filled, man, you get changed. You see things. I'm telling you, I saw myself on an angel's shoulders. Restored, youthful, long hair, praising God. <laughs> Out of all these thousands of white robes, there, it was, there he was. <laughs> anyway. Colossians <laughs> 3, verse 1. Let's speak it, please. Whoa. Then, oh, if then you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above. Amen. Praise God. Where Christ is, sitting at the right hand of God, set your mind or your thoughts on the things above, not on the things of the earth. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is our life, appears, then you also appear with him in glory. Therefore, put to death your members which are on the earth. Now, I want you to look at these members. Fornication, uncleanness, passion, evil desire, and covetousness, which is idolatry. Those members are all emotional attachments. They're emotional slavery. Because of these things of God, the wrath of God is coming upon the sons of disobedience. That means judgment. In which you yourselves once walked when you lived in them. But now you yourselves are to put off all these. Anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy language out of your mouth. Don't lie to one another since you've put off the old man with his deeds. And put on the new man who is renewed in the knowledge according to the image of him who created him. Where there is neither Greek nor Jew, circumcised or uncircumcised, barbarian, Scythian, slave nor free, but Christ is all in all. Set your thoughts on the promises of God, his goodness, his greatness, and his holiness. Put to death your emotional desires that have enslaved you to the oppression of the enemy. That causes you to forsake the promises of God. And become the children of wrath or the sons and daughters of disobedience. Do I need to repeat that? <laughs> uh, he says, set your thoughts on, on the promises of God. His goodness, which is being thankful. Remember we talked about this. His greatness, which is praise. His holiness, which is worship. Put to death your emotional desires that have enslaved you to the oppression of the enemy. The oppression of the enemy. How does he enslave you? Through desires, emotional desires. Remember, Satan's greatest we weapon is what? Deception and his power is what? Fear. Fear is an emotion. I mean, we keep talking about these things, but many people are drifting from these, not being reminded. Again, put to death your emotional desires that have enslaved you to the oppression of the enemy that causes you to forsake, forget the promises of God. And by doing that, you become the children of wrath or judgment or chastening and known as sons and daughters of disobedience. Look at the world right now. Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. He's got all of these. They're all wrapped. They're slaves to emotional. Emotional desires. Emotional slavery. They walk in fear. They don't know what to do. In Galatians 3, verse 1. Oh, 
Oh, foolish Galatians, who has bewitched you, deceived you, that you should not obey the truth, before whose eyes Jesus Christ was clearly portrayed among you as crucified? This only I want to learn from you. Did you receive the Spirit by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? Are you so foolish, having begun in the Spirit, are you now being made perfect by the what? By the flesh. Have you suffered so many things in vain? If indeed it was in vain. <laughs> he says, you have been bewitched, you have been deceived. Bring it upon the children of God. This, this is what the, the, the that's, remember the enemy's after the children of God. He already has the children of the world. Amen. You have been bewitched, that's bewitchment, witchcraft. To be deceived, bringing upon the children of God self-imposed sufferings. Everyone self-imposed sufferings. Somebody say it. Praise God. Self-imposed sufferings. Becoming foolish to attempt to fix things in the carnal realm and their own understanding. By passing the spiritual realm of truth. They're, they're put the spiritual realm of truth aside. And they get caught in the emotional arena of everything. And they try to fix things themselves. And it causes harm. It puts them back into slavery. What is it? First of all, these things bring a self-imposed suffering. They keep blaming the enemy. The enemy ain't done nothing. The devil made me do it. No, he didn't. Oh, I've been fighting. I've been suffering. I've been doing this. I've been doing that. You brought it on yourself. The Bible says the devil cannot touch you. He can't touch you unless you allow it. He'll knock. It's amazing how many people say, who's there? Or just say, come on in. <laughs> Listen, we will be tried, we'll be tempted, we'll be challenged. But you can't allow it to bring you into emotional slavery. The world is an emotional slavery. We're not to live like that. That's not the children of God. That's the children of the devil. Amen? Amen? See, so they try to fix things in the carnal state of being instead of the spiritual. They bypass the spiritual. Well, we'll get to that later. I'll try and fix it myself first, then I'll ask God. 1 Corinthians 10, verse 12. Therefore, let him who thinks he stands take heed thus he what? He falls. No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful, who will not allow you to be tempted. What? Beyond what you are able. But with the temptation, will always make a way of escape that you may be able to what? Able to bear it. When you are in position... Aligning yourself with the truth of Christ, God makes a way of escape to those who have been taken captive. The first thing he's going to make a way of escape, he's going to loose you from yourself. And he's going to loose you from yourself in an emotional prison. It's a supernatural pathway of escape. And, of course, we know the formula to this. Deny yourself, pick up the cross, and follow. Or, you know what I'm saying? Follow what? Follow him out of it. But the first thing you got to do is deny yourself from all emotional. Emotional slavery. But this is what I feel like. But this, you don't know what happened. But, 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 but ministry. This is no but ministry. We are the head. Amen. Hallelujah. 
So we're going to follow into the, his life of peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Spirit. He is the way, the truth, and the life of escape. See, so when, when there, these things begin to happen, you've got to deny yourself. That's the first thing. I deny yourself of all emotional feeling. No, I'm not going there. Why? Because the enemy is just trying to enslave you again. And as you begin to agree with it, then more come. Then you try to justify it. You try to reason. You begin to rely on your own understanding. And then you want vengeance. You want to blame. Because you're always trying to take it off of yourself. Does everybody understand? That's not a pathway of escape. That's a pathway to prison. Matthew eleven twenty nine, 29, please. Take my yoke upon you and what? And what? Learn. Learn and what? Deny yourself. Pick up the cross and follow. Learn from me. For I am gentle and lowly in heart. And you will find rest for your souls. What's he mean by your souls? Your emotions, they won't be activated so much. Hello. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Grab hold of him and learn the pathway of escape from self-imposed emotional sufferings and get rest for your soul. Oh, yes. In other words, don't go to the phone. Go to the throne. Hello. You know, everybody wants, you know, there's things that happen to people, whatever. I mean, it happens to everyone. You know, we get challenged and whatever. And the first thing we want to do is attack or justify or reason or vengeance or whatever, you know. And we think about these things. Oh, the devil. Man, you know what? People got to stop blaming the devil by your self-imposed sufferings. You, we bring it on ourselves. Hello? Listen, if you ran into the street, you twisted your ankle, you can't blame the devil for twisting your ankle if you stepped off the curb. Amen? And does everybody get this? You can't blame the devil for everything that happens to you. Why? Because the Bible says the devil can't touch you unless you let him. And what's he always going to try to do? Entice and reactivate your emotion. Why? Because remember, demons get fed by what? Emotion. Ungodly emotion. Okay, let's try Matthew 6, 31. You know, we, we have a tendency to think the worst. And the enemy loves it. And he promotes it. Therefore, do not what? Do not what? I want to hear everybody say it. Do not what? Do not worry. And don't be in a hurry. Saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or what shall we wear? Or what shall we do? Or what? Or what? What? For after all these things the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knows that you are in need of all these things things. But seek first the kingdom of God, the kingdom of God. That means first seek the kingdom principles and knowledge and put them to activation. Amen? But first seek the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all things will be added to you. Therefore, do not worry about tomorrow or what you're getting ready to go through. For tomorrow will worry about its own. Sufficient for the day is its own trouble. Amen. Again, seek kingdom principles and the knowledge. Not the phone, but the throne. Too many people run to the phone. They run to Google. Thinking their answers are going to be, you know. 2 Corinthians chapter 6. There isn't a person in there that's not been mistreated by somebody. Amen? Does God know? 
Amen. Hallelujah. But when we've been mistreated many times, we want vindication. And that brings us into emotional vengeance. Then you really do stupid things. That's the thing about uh, jealousy and, 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 and all of these. In the world, people are killing one another over relationships. Jealousy and rage and, and over money and over, oh, I mean, they killed one another. Well, he was jealous because he was going out with his girlfriend. So he ended up killing him. Man, I, I saw some stuff on the news the other day. It was just crazy. But that's how the enemy works. Those, those individuals were bound by emotional vengeance, emotional unforgiveness. They couldn't, they couldn't get cut loose. Verse 11, please. Second Corinthians 6, 11. Let's speak it. O Corinthians, we have spoken openly to you. Our heart is wide open. You are not restricted by us, but you are restricted by your own affection. Is an affection and emotion? Yes. He tells them right there, man, you're messed up because you're emotionally enslaved. Now in return for the same, I have to speak to his children because you can't get it. Whining and grumbling, complaining. Amen. Restricted, have been taken captive by their emotions, unable to see the pathway of escape. They can't see it. They become anxious and fearful. In First Peter chapter five, verse six. Therefore, do what? Oh, that means deny yourself. Amen. Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God that he may exalt you in due time. Casting your care upon him for he cares for you. Be sober, be vigilant because your adversary the devil walks about like a roaring lion seeking whom he may what? Devour. Cast your cares. <laughs> Cast your cares. Cast your cares. Lord, you know, I, you see this, I give it to you. Hello. That's it. I'm done. You work it out. I don't have to. I'll wait on you. I'll what? Wait. Wait. Ooh. See, you can't lean on your own understanding in these times. When, that, when the flood comes in and all of these emotions start to arise, don't do anything. Just go to the Lord. Lord, I cast this on you. I exchange this. Because in this state, I, I don't know what to do, and I will wait on you. I will what? Wait on you. Cast your cares and wait. Don't lean on your own understanding. Go to Psalm 40. I what? I waited patiently. In other words, I endured for the Lord. And as I waited, you know what? He inclined to me. And he heard my cry. He also brought me up out of the emotional pit. <laughs> out of the miry clay and set my feet upon a rock. And he established my steps. In other words, he gave me direction. What? He set the pathway of escape. He's put a new song in my mouth. Praise to our God. Many will see it in fear and will trust in the Lord. Blessed is that man who makes the Lord his trust and does not respect the proud, nor such as turn to the side to the lie of emotion. Trust, rest, and wait. Too many times we're too anxious to try and fix it. Not willing to wait and trust. James chapter 5, 13. Is any among you what? Suffering. If there's anyone among you suffering, let him what? Pray. He didn't tell him to go to the phone. Amen. He didn't tell him to go to his neighbor. He didn't tell him to go nowhere. He said, go pray. 
Is anyone cheerful? Let him sing psalms. Is anyone among you sick? Let him call for the elders of the church and let him pray over him, anointing him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer of faith will save the sick and the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, he will be what? Forgiven. Confess your trespasses to one another and pray for one another that you may be healed. The effective fervent prayer of a righteous man avails much. Pray. Get counsel. And when you get counsel, do it. <laughs> I get many people that come back and say, you know, Lord, I need, uh, you know, Pastor, I need counsel. I said, you did the first part? No. Well, then don't come back and tell me you need counsel when you haven't fulfilled the first part. Hello? Hallelujah. Do it. Don't try it. Amen? And, and don't drift into justification. Don't ri drift into complaining and grumbling and blame. You just enslaved yourself again and stepped out of the pathway of escape into emotional slavery. That's a terrible place to be. I mean, that's the most painful place is emotion slavery. It's the inner hurts. It's the inner. Because you'd like to be able to do something about it, but you can't. The only thing you can do is deny yourself. Pick up the cross and follow and go to the pathway of escape. So you're not standing in that, what we call the puddle of affliction, self-infliction, self-sufferings. 2 Timothy chapter 2. Yeah, how can you be an example to someone if you're doing those goofy things? How can you tell somebody you're a Christian when you're grumbling and complaining all the time and you're fearful and you're blaming and you're justifying? Oh, I'm a Christian. Man, don't tell nobody you're a Christian. That's not a Christian. That's a child of offspring of evil. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 21. Therefore, if anyone does what? Cleanses himself from the latter. He'll be a vessel of honor. Now, how are you going to cleanse yourself from the latter? You've got to constantly deny yourself. And you must go to, through the process of cutting loose from these emotional attachments. You are cleansing yourself. You're looking to be clean in everything you do, everything you say, everything you think. Everything you touch, you're careful of what you agree with, and you discern, is that pleasing God or not? Is this, see, you've got to be able to see it through, because your, your response to that or agreement with it, you'll be able to see it through. You'll know whether it's going to cause problems, more suffering, amen, or is it a pathway of escape? Hallelujah. Therefore, if anyone cleanses himself from the latter emotions, he will be a vessel for honor, sanctified, useful for the master, prepared for every good work. Flee also youthful lust, but pursue righteousness, faith, love, peace with those who call on the Lord out of a what? Pure heart. Make sure your associations are correct. But avoid foolish and ignorant disputes, knowing that they generate strife. And a servant of the Lord must not quarrel, but be what? Gentle to all, able to teach in patience. In other words, be an example. In humility. In humility means denying yourself. Correcting those who are in opposite. How can you correct someone you can't correct yourself? And you can't even deny yourself. It's called hypocrite. If God perhaps will grant them repentance so that they may know the truth and that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. He, that's how he gets people to do his will, by emotionally enslave them. Then they make decisions without waiting. Without what? Waiting. Because they're looking for a fulfillment. They're, again, v vengeance is looking for a fulfillment. So they're looking for a fulfillment with blame or justification, or grumbling. They call people and grumble. Man, you wouldn't believe what happened. 
Oh, that felt good. But you just sowed into the flesh, and now you're just going to reap corruption. Or oh, maybe a moment of something, but the ripple effect of it is emotional slavery again. And there's no way of escape without what? Denying yourself and following the formula of the way of escape. That's why people are, do you ever get around people that are emotionally roller coasters? They're like a roller coaster. Up and down. You don't know what the heck state they're going to be in. They over-exaggerate everything. Overstating and exaggerating everything is an emotional problem. See, people who have more emotional problems than anything, that's their problem. That is the problem. Uh, like I said, you can blame the devil. The devil's just trying to create emotion in you. That's what's called fiery doubt. Hey! You know, he just calls you. Sends you one of those paper airplanes and people read it. And then they go freaky. He's always trying to set you up so that you can harm yourself because he can't harm you. <laughs> Hallelujah. Is everybody okay? Cleanse from emotional entrapments of all people, places, and things. You know those things that affect you. You know. You know your past. You know those things that are still in front of you all the time. Cut them loose with the blood. And don't even consider going back and touching it again. You just enslave yourself. And the Bible says it's an abomination to build on those things God freed you from. It's an abomination. Amen? Philippians 4. Ever get a phone call while you're driving? And you're, yeah, 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 yeah. You went past it. Oh, shoot, I got to. Hello. You just got distracted. You missed the road. Amen. You believe it on Google or Google Maps? Oh, man, it took me the wrong way. <laughs> the thing lied to me again. No, nah, man, we just got distracted. Amen. Hallelujah. Philippians 4, verse 5. Let your gentleness be known to all men that the Lord is where? At hand, like I said. If you're walking in peace, joy, and righteousness, they're going to know that the Lord is at hand, even no matter what you're going through. But if you're freaking out, you're screaming, you're grumbling, you're complaining, you're running to the phone, you're spewing on everyone, hey, you know, the enemy knows you, you, he's got you. He, that's, how, that's called fruits. Your emotional reactions are fruits. Amen. Be anxious for everything, right? No, be anxious for nothing. Hallelujah. But in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your request be made known to God. Not to man, to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. That's so powerful. Gentleness, peace, and joy and righteousness. Uh, that's witnesses that the Lord is leading you out of traps set by the enemies. He's leading you. Anxiousness is fear, oppression, and emotional paralyzation. It's an emotional what? Paralyzation. Hallelujah. Psalm 55. I start at verse 4. My heart is severely pained within me, and the terrors of death have fallen upon me. Fearfulness and trembling have come upon me, and horror has overwhelmed me. So I said, oh, that I had wings like a dove. I would fly away and be at rest. Nobody wants, look, everybody has a tendency to run, but you just take it with you. <laughs> no matter where you go, you got to deal with this face to face. Indeed, I would wander far off and remain in the wilderness. Yeah, and do nothing. 
I would have hastened my escape from the windy storm and the tempest. Destroy, O Lord, and divide their tongues, for I have seen violence and strife in the city. Day and night they go around it on the walls. And iniquity and trouble are all around in the midst of it. Destruction is in the midst. Oppression and deceit do not depart from the streets. For it is not an enemy who reproaches me, that I would bear it. Nor is it one who hates me, who has exalted himself against me, that I could hide from him. But it was you, a man my equal. Now he's talking about someone that was close to him. My companion and my acquaintance. We took sweet counsel together and walked to the house of God in the throng. Let death seize them. Let them go down alive into hell, for wickedness is their dwellings among them. As for me, I will cry upon the Lord. I will call upon the Lord. And the Lord will what? Save me. Evening and morning and at noon, I will pray and cry aloud, and he shall hear my voice. He has redeemed my soul, my emotions, in peace from the battle that was against me. For there are many against me. God will hear and afflict them, even he who abides from old, because they do not change. Therefore, they do not fear God. You know, the Bible tells us to do some things. Work out your salvation with fear and trembling reverence. Amen? So we're going to work these things out. We're going to take what God has given us through his word. Amen? And we're going to apply them to every part of our life, no matter what it is. It doesn't mean you won't go through, go through th stuff, but you're going to go through it. There will always be a pathway of escape. God will not deny you nor forsake you. But you've got to wait on him. You've got to deny yourself. Let God be God. Amen? Because when you go ahead of him, then you're trying to be God. And it never works. Did you ever try to fix something that just got worse? Hallelujah. I know people try to fix their cars and it just gets worse. Because they don't know what the heck they're doing. They're not willing to wait. Amen. It's in everything. Everything we do. Every choice we make. Remember, you're going to be attacked or you're going to be influenced by three areas. Your flesh soul and the voice of the stranger every choice you're getting ready to make everybody got it don't do anything wait wait on the Lord don't go to the phone go to the throne he's got an answer for everyone if you just wait on him amen and let the peace of God guide your hearts and your minds cast your cares upon him for he cares for you God doesn't have to prove anything to us. He's already did it. He did it on the cross. Amen? But his promises are faithful and true if you allow him to work in your life. Amen? Sometimes we need to get out of the way and let God be God and we be his children. And there is a pathway of escape no matter what it is. No, no matter how great it seems, there's a pathway of escape. Amen? Amen? Praise God. Father, we give you all glory, honor, and praise. We thank you for your word. We ask that you seal your word today in our hearts that we may abide and cooperate with your word. We thank you. We love you. And prepare our hearts for communion. In Jesus' name.